Man show all about Tila, or isn't it? Oh, Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith. Now, you've been promoting the crap out of this He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Revelation series over on Netflix. We got an article here. One thing Kevin Smith forgot to mention when he was fanboying all over this trailer, he's got a little breakdown about the Easter eggs and the secrets and all this. He's basically geeking out over the trailer, promising that our toys are right where we left them and they didn't pull a she like Noelle Stevens and come in and say, you know what? You haven't played with this in a while. We're just going to break it. It's like, but it's on a display case with my cherished My Little Pony reproductions and stuff. Oh, no, no, no. You don't want this. We're taking this now and it's not for you. Well, why'd you call it She-Ra? Why'd you make, or, or He-Man, for example. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. This is why I'm concerned that every time we get modern day Hollywood or anybody into our stuff, they decide that, oh, it's problematic and we need to change it and fix it. So here we go. He has his trailer reaction here. Let's let's take a look at what he says about his trailer from, is this geeked? It's on Twitter. We'll make it full screen. You know, make it all full screen. Blop. There you go. Geeked. From his geeked thing. I hope they're not going to claim me, but we are reacting to it and transforming it in totally transformative ways because we're reacting to what Kevin Smith says. Hey, man, it's me, Kevin Smith, showrunner of Masters of the Universe uh, Revelation. Hi, Kevin Smith. One of the things I always loved about Kevin Smith was, especially on something like Clerks Uncensored, the animated series, you would see little, little nods to kind of how people like me feel. You know, I want my money back when stuff is crap and... Uh, Hopefully he's not going to make something crap for us. Can't wait to geek out with you kids as we look at the final. See what he's saying here. See, he's not saying that he was a fan because he knows we busted him by saying, yeah. But, but, but that's the thing. He never trashed it, at least. But no, he was a little too old for this. He was older than us. Final trailer. I've been waiting for a long time for this to drop, man. We go back and honor every part of the Masters of the Universe legacy and Okay, so they're honoring it. I think I think as long as they're honoring it, it's going to be better, hopefully. Hopefully. Like, I might cry. I love this so much. Here we go. So he's owning the fact he cries on everything. All right, all right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. And we introduce you to our players, Adam and Tila, He-Man and Tila. If I don't do this, everybody dies. This moment with He-Man going, if I don't do this, everybody dies, and rushing with the sword is so important when you actually see the show. So that's going to be like the tail end. All right. So he basically geeks out. He says, yeah, uh, Triclops is Henry Rollins. Roboto is going to be cool. All this stuff. Gives away spoilers of, you know, what's going to be the end thing. One thing he does not mention in this clip at all that I'm really, really concerned with is why you went the the SJW -E look for Tila. Why did you have to change her into anything? Why? Why? I mean, I never had a problem with looking at Shira or Tila or any of these characters. Because that's what you want. That's what you want. And and I know I'm making a big deal. We're all making a big deal out of it. Because we've been burned with Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who. What Name your franchise in the comment section of what they have taken from the past. For me personally, She-Ra was another one that they completely messed up. Star Trek was the biggie for me where they said, hey, we don't like it. It's problematic. Therefore, we need to change it because we're better than you. All right. Well, I liked this as it was and I don't like the people who go around changing shit. So... He does not mention one reason, one choice, anything of why they went with the, the side shaved head SJW crapping look with Tila. And I would not be surprised if the network had some sort of compromise or something where they decided, well, she's a redhead, can't you, I don't know, make her more diverse? Because we know what they do to care. But it doesn't matter when you were just making her look like the damn stereotype anyway. Well, it's not diverse when they all look like this. Every single one of them. And when you tell us, us girls who grew up with this stuff, the girls who were watching He-Man and playing with the He-Man toys and the She-Ra toys, because they're all interconnected. They're all part of the same thing. 
when you tell us that the stuff we liked as kids, oh, well, well, that's just gonna, you're, you just can't watch that because you're gonna feel insecure because they're sexier than you or they're prettier than you or they're, you know, more curvaceous and, oh, a real woman wouldn't wear, I, you know, I don't care what a real woman would wear. This is fantasy. This is a fantasy cartoon series that's supposed to play on my nostalgia. And when you start changing shit up, it no longer plays on my nostalgia. I am cautious. I don't know if this is going to be as bad as we're getting set up for. Kevin Smith seems to be like pretty, pretty, hey, we're not breaking your toys. This is awesome. It's, it's right there where you left it. Scare Glow, represented for the first time here, ladies and gentlemen. He gets to debut after having a figure for years. Cl not gonna lie, I do like the Scare Glow figure. All right, so he's basically trying to promise that it's just a little bit more final, a little more, I don't know, a little more violent. They can do a little bit more. They're bringing in more characters. They had the, yeah, that's what, that's fine. I don't know. They're trying a little too hard though. My big, my big skeptic, like my, my, my red alert thing in the back of my head is going off saying, you know, you know, they're not mentioning why the chila choices can you give me some give us some explanation there because don't get me wrong i'm loving collecting these toys i'm loving collecting like i need him i need him still i need a kitty the issue i have obviously here is that they're still not explaining these tila character choices like i said i just want to know what's up with this whole tila stuff we're worried it's going to be a bait and switch where Prince Adam's gonna show up in the first thing. They're gonna have him fuck off for most of the series. It's going to be following Tila, who looks like a quote-unquote diversity stereotype character around Eternia, male bashing and taking He-Man's sword from him or whatever. That's not what we want. Again, my concern is why Kevin Smith doesn't say anything about this Tila stuff. There's focusing all on, oh yes, and we've got all these characters. Look, it's Scareglow. Look, it's this character. It's this character. Okay, great. Why does Tila look like that? So you're dancing around the issue. If I'm reading too much into this, I will admit it. If this is good, I'll say so. I suppose I have to watch it now. At least, I'll at least give it an episode, and if it's just absolute garbage, and it's just, oh, He-Man, Prince Adam, you're just such a toxic male, then I'm gonna freaking rail on it. I'm Mecca, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye! For the blackest of ops, when nature calls. Because modern warfare needs a modern cat litter. Because there's no time to answer the call. Duty Scoops. Leave no kitty behind.